Hi, am I audible and visible to all of you? If you can see and hear me, just give me a quick yes. Awesome. So hi everyone and welcome to this Friday's session. What we're going to talk about today is a very interesting concept. We're going to talk about alternative investments and then how they can be tokenized on the hybrid finance blockchain. Now, if on your screen you are able to see a mind map, that gives you kind of an overview of what all comes under the concept of alternative finance. Now, when we use this term, anything, any kind of an investment other than stocks, bonds, and cash, like you know, fixed deposits or cash that you hold with you, say your mutual funds, you know, those conventional investments. Anything other than that is what we call as an alternative investment. Now, alternative investment is a huge concept globally. So, in fact, you may have even heard about the concept of an AIF or an alternate investment fund. So, in almost every country of the world, there are separate laws which relate to even registering such funds. So, even things like uh, venture capitals, VCs, they get registered under the alternate investment fund. So, AIFs are all a massive uh, global kind of an investment vehicle and we can divide them into many many parts so for example one of the most common things that we hear about are art and collectibles so you know it could be like physical paintings it could be sculptures it could be antiques and historical artifacts or collector clothes like you know clothes worn by some very famous film star in a particular very hit movie those have a huge value those are also coming under the concept of alternative investments. Things like designer handbags or, you know, in many of your homes, you may find rare books, coins, notes and stamps. So, in fact, this is uh, an advice that I wanted to give all of you that you'll be surprised how much money there is actually lying around your house. You know, there may be old coins that are there, maybe collected by your grandfather. You don't even know the value of that today. Or there may be postage stamps that someone in your family was collecting. What if there are 100 year old books or maybe some first edition kind of books that may be lying around. So I would say that the first advice that I can give all of you is after this session is done, look around your house, look around your grandparents houses everywhere and see, you know, what are these kinds of old antiques, historical artifacts, clothes, rare books and other things that you can find and then figure out how to do a valuation because Many times it turns out people have crores of rupees worth of paintings and other things in their house, but they didn't even know the value of that. So all of that comes under the first category of art and collectibles. It also includes things like watches and sneakers, not all sneakers, obviously. But nowadays we have a lot of limited edition sneakers that come in. Those are also very valuable. And in fact, you can buy them and sell them second hand, third hand, and the value actually keeps going up over time, provided, of course, they are properly maintained. Now, when we look at tokenizing such kind of assets, what we've got to remember, it's not just about trading in them. When we talk about tokenization, there are multiple things that we do. So authentication is also done on the blockchain. Provenance or the history of ownership is also there. Then it can be fractionalized and traded. So all of these things can be done for art and collectibles also. If you have any questions, keep putting them on the side. I'll keep taking them. Let me know if it's all clear so far. Palesh has an interesting question about old or antique electronics. So, uh, you know, people used to play this music. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Those old kind of uh, phonograms or I, I forgot what it's called. But you put a record on it, you know, that black uh, circular kind of a record you play on it and music comes from that, the olden way of doing it. Those are actually sold at quite high prices today. So, yes, Palish, even that would come under that old or antique electronics. Well, I wouldn't say electronics, it would be more electrical. Yeah, gramophones, that's right. That's the term that I was looking for. Those are quite expensive nowadays. And in fact, if you have those old records also, I think they're called LP records, if I'm not mistaken. So, depending upon if it is a first edition kind of a thing, that itself could sell for a lot of money. I've heard recently about some LPs selling for actually millions of dollars also. Of course, they were very rare. Uh, yes, Palak says vinyl. That's right. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting all these terms. That's right. The vinyl records. Yes. So 
first step after this session all of you are going to go and look around and in fact my personal favorites are of course currency notes and old books so you know you may suddenly find out that you may have a book dated say 1901 or 1890 and those kind of stuff don't throw them away in fact you can even go to these old raddi sh shops you know where old books are sold very very cheap go and look around there and sometimes you can actually end up with some rare editions which can be worth a lot of money i remember several years ago when i had gone to singapore i went to their official government philatelic museum and bought postage stamps of their independence day when they actually got it in the 1960s now today they are already about 80 or 90 years old and in another 20 30 years when singapore let's say comes to its 100th uh, or you know centennial independence day those stamps could be worth a huge amount of money so all of these things come under the first category of alternative investments which we call as art and collectibles and if you do find such kind of things get in touch with us and we'll help you to monetize those any other questions on this one if there are just put them on the comment the second that we are seeing nowadays quite a bit is called carbon credits so it's an interesting concept so globally countries have realized that you know human activities industrial activities are causing a lot of damage to the environment so companies are being given a limit on how much pollution they can emit and if they emit more they have to buy something called carbon credits and only then they can emit extra pollution and these carbon credits are generated by projects that are helping the environment for example somebody is planting trees or somebody has developed a machine which can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so those people can get money by selling carbon credits to the polluting industries so nowadays globally billions of dollars worth of carbon credits are being traded there are brokers in that there are investors in that who actually buy it and then sell it and they make huge amounts of money so these come under two categories one is what we call as the compliance market where the law makes it compulsory and one is what we call as a voluntary market where even though it is not compulsory by law people are doing it because they want to contribute to the atmosphere or to the betterment of the environment so if you look at some of the airline tickets nowadays they also mention how much carbon is being consumed per trip that you are taking in india new laws have come in it's called the carbon credit trading scheme and by next year we will have a full fledged carbon market also in india so i would say that's also a very interesting area of alternate investment that is there today then i don't know in some uh, you know if you watch some of these american tv series on law like for example there's one called the good fight you'll suddenly notice that there is a concept called litigation financing now this is a very interesting concept suppose a law firm comes to know that there is an opportunity to find file a class action case against some very big company they go to these financiers who actually pay for the litigation and then whatever money is finally given as a fine it is shared with the financiers so imagine you can actually invest your money in court cases in other countries of the world and then whatever result comes you can get a percentage of that so that's also a very interesting area of alternative investments and in fact there are many apps that are available which allow you to look at all these cases which are pending and you can actually invest your money so i strongly recommend watching a tv series called the good fight and i think episode 2 or 3 actually shows in live how these kind of litigation financing takes place uh palak's question is what is the need benefit of putting cc on web3 instead of web2 so uh palak that's a good question now what i'm talking about here and the reason that we do this on the blockchain one of the most important reasons is authentication so nowadays what is happening in fact guardian newspaper in the uk recently did a sting operation and they found out that one of the world's largest validators of carbon credits was actually doing a lot of fake validation without verifying or just by taking extra money they were giving the approvals and secondly what is beginning to happen is lot of people are selling the same carbon credit multiple times it is called a concept of double spending and blockchain technology as you know especially when bitcoin was invented one of the main reasons was to prevent double spending so if we list carbon credits on the blockchain one is we can prove the authenticity second the provenance third we can ensure that the same carbon credit is not being used up or consumed multiple times so palak those are the reasons that we actually use it on the blockchain rather than conventional private technology 
another thing that you should always remember whenever we put any asset on the blockchain one of the biggest benefits is anybody in the world by running the node of the blockchain on their laptop has the real time complete database of all transactions that does not happen if you use conventional technologies like today let's say you have money in the bank or you have money in the say stock markets it's not on your system it's a third party who knows your actual balances and only they can tell it to you so you are dependent upon the third party but when we look at blockchain based systems anybody can run a node on their system and real time data is available with you hope that answers your question do keep putting in all your other questions the third is cars planes and yachts so now cars a lot of you may wonder you know cars value only goes down that's not true there are many cars which are called collectible or classic their value actually goes up over time as they become older and more rare then you have planes and yachts where even though the value may not go up but they generate a lot of revenue so you know somebody is running a helicopter service or private jets they can tokenize it people around the world can contribute to it and then whatever revenues are generated you can get your share in it so that can happen to you know like let's take an example of a ferrari and you know people pay about $1000 per day to actually drive that ferrari so you got to travel all the way to say germany rent it out and then you can drive it around for a day now every time somebody is driving it and paying that $1000 money is going to the owners of the car so there are platforms already looking at tokenizing cars planes and yachts if there are any questions on that just put it on the side then we have a concept called colored diamonds so now i'm not talking about conventional diamonds but there is a concept called colored diamond so there is a slight color in the diamond which makes it even more valuable now i'm not a very big fan of diamonds i'll be very honest with you because a lot of things can go wrong in diamond investing there are a lot of fakes which are there but that's where actually the blockchain can benefit the diamond industry where you can authenticate so every diamond has a laser imprinted number that can be put and then that number can be tagged on the blockchain right so when we are looking at that there can be one single record so you know who owns that particular number of the diamond and then if somebody else comes out of the fake it can easily be detected so color diamonds is also a very interesting area shantanu wants to know about real estate shantanu i'm just coming to real estate in a few minutes the next one is commodities so there we usually talk about precious metals like gold silver platinum palladium we talk about energy and we talk about agricultural products in fact people are already tokenizing wheat coffee where what happens is an entire warehouse full of say coffee beans or wheat or rice of a particular category is there and then documents are available which prove legally that you have that quantity and then you can tokenize it so sitting anywhere in the world you can actually invest in agricultural products in another country so if you feel the price of coffee is going to go up in the wholesale market you can buy uh, coffee fractions on the blockchain and then when the price goes up you can actually sell and make a huge amount of profit then we have copyright licenses in fact there are many platforms in india which have started out about movies there are also some coming up where you know software music movies and books these are intellectual creations and the legal right which the creator gets is called a copyright then the creator can give a license to people so for example uh, you know the lady who wrote the harry potter series of books so she has the copyright which means she can decide who can sell the books who can translate the books who can make movies who can make merchandise from it she can sell those individual licenses to people and then people can make money from the license like the harry potter movies and not just the books books definitely got translated then the movies came the merchandise came and that generated billions of dollars worth of revenue so in fact if any of you are authors it's a very good way of raising funding for your next book you know people can buy into your book which is still being written and then when the book makes money you can make or you they can all be given a share in the profits of that same happens for music same happens for software so that's another very interesting area of alternative investment then of course there are cryptocurrencies and digital assets you know where we have cryptocurrencies like say bitcoin then you have utility coins like ethereum or you have governance tokens like hifi or uniswap all of these also come under the alternative investments then we have another interesting category called as the distressed assets so you know they are also called as npa or non performing assets so let's say someone took a loan to run a factory but they were not able to pay the loan on time 
so the bank can then take over the property or we call those properties as distressed assets and they are usually available at a huge discount so it's actually a very good way of buying solid real estate and machinery as assets at a discounted price that's one opportunity that's there you can also buy machines and you know a lot of companies can build their expansion by buying over npas of competitive or rival companies then we have of course foreign currency where you know you must have heard about stable coins where you can buy into foreign exchange so suppose you are in india and you feel the rupee value will fall against the dollar or you are in europe and you feel the euro value will fall against the dollar again so you could buy sitting in one country foreign currency or currency of another country and then make money on the change in the price of that then we have a concept called hedge funds which are primarily restricted to the hni and ultra hnis and they invest in a lot of risky assets or alternative investments then we have loyalty fund uh, loyalty points so uh, loyalty points when we talk about them you know so many of us when we use our credit cards or you buy airline tickets movie tickets you get these loyalty points those are also actually alternative investments because that actually gives you huge discounts or cashbacks so that's also another area of alternative investments then we have private equity private equity means equity shares of companies which are not listed on the stock exchange so these could be startups and private limited companies and people buy and sell shares of those and that's another that's probably the biggest area of alternative investments that we have then we have real estate now somebody had a question on that let me have a look at that uh, the laws for tokenizing real estate sure now uh, let me give you an idea about how that would work so when we talk about real estate we can divide it into multiple parts right so one is commercial real estate farmland or agricultural luxury real estate private islands reits that's real estate investment trust and residential so now when we look at the laws it depends on which kind of property we are talking about so let's say it is zoned for commercial in a place like bombay the laws are a lot more easy as compared to say agricultural land or farmland which is very restricted in who can buy or sell so the answer to your question is it depends upon which state or country the real estate in it and what kind of approval it has like is it commercial is it agricultural is it you know like a private island is it residential depending upon that the laws would change but real estate is also a very inter interesting area of alternative investments then we have uh, let me take one question uh can we tokenize bitcoin on hafi platform that is can it be converted into an etf okay that's a very good interesting concept right so the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is why do we even need an etf for cryptocurrencies like a lot of people do talk about etfs or exchange traded funds now i'll tell you the reason why people go for this holding cryptocurrencies on your own is a very dangerous thing because if you do not back up your wallet properly or if someone manages to hack into it all your crypto is gone and you can never get it back it's not like there is a bank who can actually reset your password it doesn't work like that that's the reason a lot of people prefer to hold their cryptocurrency in an etf so somebody else is taking care of the custody but then always remember there is also that risk that if that somebody who's holding the crypto does something like what happened in ftx then your crypto could also vanish so uh, to answer your question on whether you can tokenize bitcoin on hi5 platform no we don't allow that because we are only allowing tokenization of real world assets so which are you know tangible assets other than cryptocurrencies so almost every asset that i've spoken about today other than the cryptocurrencies those can be tokenized maybe in future someday maybe we may get into it but as of right now i don't do think we'll do that because there are so many other ways in which you could hold your cryptocurrencies finally uh, we also have another very interesting concept called sports teams and franchises uh, you know where you have ipl teams so today it is a few very rich companies or individuals or film stars who buy out football clubs and cricket clubs but in future i expect to see fans getting together pooling their money and then actually buying out a sports team uh in fact let's take an example uh, you know of a dao some time ago some few people came together to form a dao or a decentralized autonomous organization where they pooled in the money 
and they used that money to bid for a physical copy of the original US constitution. They lost the auction, but they decided to keep the DAO running and they put the money together and invested in other assets. So I think a lot of people, uh, fans of sports in future, could get together, pool the money and actually buy out a sports team. Finally, we have Whiskey Cast, which is the project that I'm most bullish on because I've actually built a platform for that, where the whiskey, when it is in the cask, over a period of time, the value goes up. And the reason is very simple. First three years, you cannot even call it whiskey. After three years, legally, we can call that whiskey. And then the older it gets, the more valuable it becomes and the rarer it becomes. So people can buy into fractions of whiskey casks also. A cask is a wooden barrel. So this is a broad list of alternative assets. Over the next few weeks, every week, I'll be posting blog posts on each of these assets so that you can go deeper into it. But I would strongly recommend that all of you start thinking about it. Because no matter what age or stage you are in life, alternative investments is something that everyone can actually put money in. And depending upon the asset, the returns can be much higher than conventional assets. Now, let's take some questions. So whatever questions you guys have, please feel free to put them. And uh, next Friday, I'll be in the session talking about doing a deep dive into the technology of HiFi platform. And all of you will be able to, you know, many of you had questions about how do I run a node and how does the, uh, how can I develop a wallet on it? So we'll be doing a tech session. So I'll be answering all these questions in that. And next Friday onwards, we'll also be inviting some experts to join in. So if any of you are experts in the various areas that we talk about on this show, you know, tokenization, alternative investments, blockchain, get in touch with me on LinkedIn. And uh, I'd love to call you over and, you know, you can participate and help the audience with your insights also. Uh, I'll wait for a couple of minutes. If there are any kind of questions, please feel free to put them. Uh, what is the APR plan to run the node? So uh, for the nodes, we'll be handling this question tomorrow. So I'll explain exactly how you make money from testnet nodes as well as the mainnet nodes. And then you'll be able to calculate. So, you know, uh, the returns would depend upon how you're going to run the nodes. Whether you're running it, say, on a bunch. So let's say you run a software company and you have 100 employees. All of them have laptops which are office-owned. And you're going to run the nodes on them. Then obviously your cost is virtually zero because you're already running those laptops. But if you're going to run a dedicated server only for the node, then automatically your costs change. So that is the reason I can't give you a flat answer on what the returns are. But don't worry about it. Over the uh, next Friday session, we'll go deeper into this and you'll be able to easily calculate what kind of returns you can get on that. We are also very soon announcing the HiFi token public sale date, the day we get listed. So as you all know that we are part of a very interesting Government of India innovation sandbox. There are about 15 companies in that from around the world, including I think JP Morgan is part of that. So once we successfully exit that uh, sandbox, we are going to be listing HiFi tokens on multiple platforms. So we will be announcing those details early next week. I know a lot of you are looking forward to that. So we'll be giving you the details on that also next week. Very soon, we are also announce, announcing our airdrop. So there's a lots, of ac lot, lots and lots of action coming from HiFi. Any other questions? Okay, I think there are no other questions as of right now. So great. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a great weekend and I will see you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.